so hello everyone welcome you all to this new video so till now for this subject vlsi design and testing we have covered four modules okay so now we have left with one final module that is module 5 again this is a very easy and very essential necessary module that is related to the sequential cmos logic circuits okay in this we are going to deal with some very important sequential circuits and we should be applying the cmos implementation to the circuits and just analyzing the uh, output okay very easy guys here we are going to study with some important circuits uh, under sequential circuits there are sr sr latch sr flip flops jk latch jk flip flops okay so this thing already you know but using the if we apply the cmos implementation to that what and all are the necessary requirements and the changes observed during the execution time everything i'm going to tell you in these videos okay so first let us start with the introduction in combinational logic circuits the output at any instance is exclusively determined by the current input values assuming propagation delay is negligible okay so this is the basic definition of a combinational logic circuits so, so first we should be comparing it with the sequential okay so here in case of a combinational logic circuits we have no memory of past inputs these circuits are called as non-regenerative circuits okay because why they are called uh, it because because there is no feedback and it cannot store or remember the previous values but in case if you compare this with the sequential logic circuits it can remember the past inputs here the output depends on the present input as well as the previous input okay so this is one important thing which you should be noting down if you want to compare combinational and sequential the combinational log logic circuits determine the output based on the current input whereas the sequential logic circuits determine the output based on the current as well as the past inputs okay figure below conceptually shows a sequential circuit composed of a combinational logic block and a memory element connected in a feedback loop you see here this is a combinational logic block here which is mentioned here okay so here you have inputs outputs and this is the memory feedback loop here which is taking place in this combinational logic and this here you see here output would be depending on the previous inputs okay so that's why this is a complete sequential circuit logic block okay the feedback in sequential circuits gives rise to regenerative behavior allowing them to retain state and thus act as memory elements so here we have some types of regenerative circuits under the sequential classification so these regenerative circuits can be classified into the following categories so here we have categories one as bistable monostable and astable okay so the stable states bistable means two stable states monostable means one astable means none okay the summary here is in bistable state it can remain either of two stable states indefinitely under appropriate conditions example are latches and flip flops so this comes under bistable states then we have monostable states it returns the single stable state after a temporary state state change caused by the external trigger for example you could be giving one shot pulse generator is an example for a stable it continuously oscillates between states with no stable operating point okay we, we don't have any stable operating point here it would be continuously oscillating so for example here they have given one example as ring oscillator okay so these are the types of regenerative circuits okay so this is the block here which is representing the combinational and sequential under logic circuits where combinational circuits are called as non-regenerative and sequential circuits are called as regenerative under sequential we have bistable monostable and astable circuits okay so importance of bistable circuits so here we are going to focus in this module mainly on the bistable circuits okay among these three types bistable circuits are most widely used and significant in the digital systems they form the foundations for latches flip-flops registers and memory elements so these are the foundation block of these bistable circuits its behavior a bistable circuit is a fundamental digital building block with two stable states it is widely used in memory elements such as latches flip-flops and registers the simplest bistable circuit can be constructed using two cross coupled inverter okay so this is one simple example of a bistable circuit that is the cross coupled inverter here you see here how uh, this inverter it's working inverter works like whatever input would be given its opposite is the output for example if you take logic zero as input the output would be inverted of the uh, in, uh, input that is it would be logic one okay it is just the inversely proportional to the input 
so here in this cross coupled inverter what its functioning is one inverter is given back to the output and the output is fed back with the inverter to the input in order to uh, give the same response okay so this is the functioning of the cross coupled inverter in this configuration output of inverter 1 is connected to the input of inver inverter 2 as shown here and output of inverter 2 is connected to the input of inverter 1 so with this the with the conclusion we could be coming that vo1 is equal to vi2 because uh, this output and in, uh, inputs of an inverter would be same and vo2 is equal to vi1 since those two are connected okay next the voltage transfer characteristics of this uh, cross coupled inverter this graph is mentioned here you see here since we have two inverters with the different operations so this curve is not is familiar to you all so here we have seen this in the cmos inverter dc characteristics this curve okay so this is vo1 vi2 and this is vi1 vo2 so this is for the this inverter but here we have one more cross coupled inverter which is you know, which is given back to from the output to the input so that's why we would be having one more curve here where we are having two stable points one is uh, this point and this point and the in, uh, intersecting point is unstable okay so since the uh, intersecting point is unstable it's uh, if you compare it with the energy graph it would be at the highest state okay whereas stable and in the stable state it would be at the lowest stage okay so this is the voltage transfer characteristic of a cross coupled inverter so you see here the voltage transfer comes vtc of both inverters can be plotted on the same graph as shown in the figure the intersection points indicate possible operating points of the circuits okay so these in intersection points are which are unstable we could be considering it as some operating points so there are three intersection points two of them are stable and one is unstable okay stability analysis at stable points inverter gain is less than one that is we have only small disturbances dk at unstable point inverter gain is greater than one that is the disturbances are amplified okay so yeah that's uh, that that was it for a uh, cross coupled so we have one more important concept under this uh, inverter only that is cmos two inverter bistable element okay so this concept is very important so here you see here the figure below shows the circuit diagram of a cmos bistable element constructed using two cascaded cmos inverter okay so this is a this is a cascaded connection here the these, these two are the connections of inverter only okay based on the cross coupled using cmos implementation they have done it that is this is one inverter okay where the output of this inverter is given to the input of the next inverter and here this input of this inverter is given to the output of this inverter okay based on this connection only the connections are made using cmos implementation two inverter bistable element these inverters are connected in a positive feedback loop the output of the first inverter is the input to the second and vice versa okay so this is connected in the loop here this configuration creates a system with the two stable states and one unstable state as shown in the graph here this configuration would be having the connection of two stable and one unstable states so in the unstable operating point both outputs at the intermediate are at the intermediate voltage level at this condition all four transistors that is two nmos and two pmos transistors are in the saturation region okay in the unstable point in the unstable state you should be keeping in mind that all the transistors would be in the saturation region this results in the maximum loop gain of the system and the operating point is highly sensitive to the even the smallest perturbation okay so this point is referred as the meta stable state okay so this is with reference to the uh, each inverter how the they are uh, having the inverse characteristics okay the voh and vol point in this one possible time domain response of the output voltages when the circuit is initially biased at its, at its unstable operating point okay when uh, when we see the unstable state in this point how the inverter would be working like it is mentioned in this graph here okay at unstable operating point uh, how the graph would be looking like with respect to the two output voltages okay vo1 and vo2 okay so key takeaways from this uh, uh, inverter cross coupled inverter that is the cmos 2 inverter bistable element is fundamental to binary state storage the meta stable point is unstable and cannot retain a state in the presence of noise the positive feedback of this uh, under the cmos inverter ensures the rapid convergence to a stable logic level the stability would be very high when there is positive feedback this circuit is the basis for sram cells latches and flip flops okay 
so these were the key takeaways under this uh, cross coupled bistable cmos inverter so hope you understood this and uh, we would be concluding this video here okay so that's all guys do support us like share subscribe to our channel in the next video we are going to discuss with the sr latch circuit okay so that's all guys thank you